Making apps in Composer Pro, you're going to often deal with objects. In this power-up, we'll take a look at how to create object data structure and how to work with them in the binding editor, the formula editor, and with components. Let's start by creating a new page variable called myObject. Then let's set the value type to be object. Objects are a special data type in that they can have properties, which makes them ideal for representing various types of data. By default, Composer starts out your object schema with an ID property. This is because it is often necessary to identify objects by a unique identifier. However, the ID property is not mandatory and can also be removed. Let's add a few new properties to the object schema. I'll add here a property called name and set it to be text type. Then for another property, let's add tags and we'll make that to be of the list type. For this list item type, let's choose text. Now our object scheme has three properties, ID and name, which are text type, and tags, which is a list of texts type. We'll want to put in some default values in this variable to be able to play around with it. To do that, let's click on the gear icon next to variable value type and let's choose initialize with a value. Now we can enter some defaults for the object properties. For ID, let's enter one. For name, dragon. And then for the tags, let's enter fire, flying and green. There, having created an object type page variable, we can now save and get back to the view canvas. For an object type data structure, there isn't any given component we should use by default. The text type properties are easy to use in bindings. For example, if we bind to this paragraph's content property, then we can see that the text type properties of the object type page variable can be accessed directly. However, a more common case is that we want to create displays of multiple object properties. And in this case, make use of the list type tags property too. For this, we can use formulas. Let's try and parse all the data from the object into text for the paragraph content. Let's change the binding type to formula, which opens up the formula editor. To access the variable in the formulas, we can write pagevars.myObject. This will also display the JSON representation of the object in the right-hand panel. In the JSON, we can see the curly brackets denoting the object with both the property names and text values enclosed in quotation marks. The tags property is a list which is denoted by square brackets with the list items inside. Now let's say we want to display the name followed by the tags and closed in parentheses. We start by accessing the name property with the dot syntax. Then let's add the space and the parentheses. Note here that the preview is really helpful when formatting data for display like this. Between the parentheses, we want to access the variable again, this time using the dot syntax to access tags. Since tags is a list of text, we get a little help from Composer, which knows to display them as a comma-separated list. Finally, let's look at how we can go about changing individual object properties. To rename our dragon, let's create a button and then let's open up the logic canvas for it. Let's drag in the set page variable flow function and then let's connect it to the component tab event. In the flow function properties, let's bind the assigned value to a formula. In the formula, we'll use the set key formula function to set the name property to a new value. Set key takes three arguments. First is the object, the second is the name of the property, and final one is the new value. Set key will then output a new object which is unchanged apart from the property key we set to a new value.
After saving, we can see that the clicking the button changes the name property of the object to a new value. And that's the basics of working with objects. Objects can have really simple or complex schemas with many properties, some of which may also be objects or list. You might create object type variables on your own, and you will often receive them from APIs or flow functions. However, with the help of Formula Editor, they are easy to tame. I hope you enjoyed this power-up, and let's meet again soon.